I'm going to talk about Istio today. Istio is a set of comp components that you install on top of Kubernetes to create a service mesh. But I'm not going to go into, to go, to go into details right now. I'm going to explain what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm a web developer. I'm working on a web application. It's a very simple application. It's basically a quiz website that will show you a Google Cloud Platform product description and two hexagons. And you have to guess, as a user, which one matches the description. It's very easy, and you can click on one and correct. So this is the application I developed. It's based on microservices, and I'm going to deploy it on a Kubernetes cluster. Who's using Kubernetes here? Quite a lot of people. OK. Who's using containers? OK, nice. So right audience. I'm in the right place. So I'm going to show you the application. In fact, I'm going to uh, deploy it. So I'm in a folder where I have all my components. And I'm using a tool called Scaffold that basically uh, where I can list my com components, the uh, Kubernetes YAML I'm going to deploy. But you don't really have to know about that. All you have to know is that with a single command, I can rebuild all my microservices, uh, tag them, and deploy them to production. And I should have this kind of website running. Oh, but it seems to be broken sometimes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it fails. I think we can say we have a problem. We're going to have to find the problem, fix it. I told you my application is based on microservices, so I went like all in on microservices. I created like four or five of them just for this website. I know it's crazy, but now I don't really know how they're deployed, where they are deployed. When my users connect to an application, which microservices are used, I don't really know. Uh, it would be nice if I had deployed it on a platform that gives, gives me full visibility on what's actually deployed. That would give me uh, visibility on which endpoints are called when my users uh, connect. It would be nice to see distributed traces, traces, like my users connect to that microservice, which talks to my, that microservice, etc. So the problem is that Kubernetes, I don't know if you know that, but it doesn't do that. You can deploy your services, but then you're a little bit naked. Of course, you can install a lot of components that uh, makes this possible. And I'm going to talk to you about one solution. There are many. Uh, this solution is Istio. Istio is what we call a service mesh. I don't, I'm not sure I know, I, I love this name, service mesh. Who likes service mesh term? Yeah, one, two, three, OK. One is a colleague, and uh, <laughs> you know, the rest don't really like it. So as I see it, it's a set of components that I deploy on top of Kubernetes, and it's going to extend the platform. The thing that the platform does, it's going to be enhanced with new features that are really ded dedicated to uh, deploying services, microservices. So I tried to show you on a Kubernetes cluster, I usually deploy containers in blue in pods. And what Istio does is going to inject inside each of your pod a special component, which is an HTTP uh, proxy or reverse proxy that's going to capture all the traffic coming inside the pod to the containers and outside of the pod to other services or to the outside. Let me draw you a picture. Basically, when my users connect, it goes through the what we call the ingress in the Kubernetes world, which is the component like the gatekeeper at the entrance of the cluster. And instead of going directly to my services and talking to my services, the traffic is interrupted by Envoy, which is a small proxy that just captures the traffic, sends it to the service. And when the service wants to respond, it responds through Envoy and that on. And in the way, Envoy is able to add a lot of features to my services. It's able to communicate with all the components that I deployed with Istio. There is one component to visualize what is it that I deployed. There is a component to visualize which services are called. There is a component to uh, see my distributed traces. So I'm going to show that to you for real, instead of just showing to you uh, images. So one thing that you always ask very quickly when you deploy microservices is, what is it actually that I deployed? Do you think that it's the first question you're going to ask to your system? No? 
I see a lot of people, they go all in on microservices, they deploy it, and after like three months, they're like, how many services do we have? How many versions? Who's talking to who? So they go to diagrams, they try to draw the diagrams. So Istio can do that for you automatically because it captures all the traffic to your services, between your services. It's very easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect. You don't have to remember the command, but I'm going to connect to one of the components that's running on Kubernetes thanks to Istio. It's called the service graph. It's going to show me Let's zoom out a little bit. It's going to show me the actual architecture, the actual services that I deployed, with actual names, actual version, the traffic between all the services. So I can see that I've got like the ingress, where people connect, and it talks to the UI microservice, which talks to the game microservice, which talks to the reference microservice. There should be another one down, yeah, the GB microservice. This already is a nice, feature, a nice feature of Istio. You can see what you actually deployed. I like it. I don't know if you like it. Do you like it? Yeah, a few. Yeah, OK. Usually, people, eh, visibility, not so great. And then they see it, and oh, OK, it's useful. But we can do better than that. Because Istio captures, intercepts all the traffic between services, it can know and because it knows the HTTP protocol, it can know which URLs, which endpoints you called, which endpoints were called by which service to which service, in which version. Did it return a 200 code or a 400 error or 500 error? What was the response time, etc.? And you can capture all that. Istio does it for you. And it will send it. It will collect that thanks to a Prometheus plugin. And it's going to show that to you in a Grafana dashboard. Lots of buzzword, right? But what you have to know is that basically you can just connect to the Grafana dashboard, and you have something like that. Let me make it bigger. So when you install Istio on your cluster, you can see the global traffic between your services, to, from your services, between the services. You can see the global success rate. You can see all the 400s, the 500s. You can then see the detail per service. Here I can see the names of my services. UI, GAM, REF. I can see them all. And then I can see the detail per version of the services. I think this is quite nice. It gives you a good visibility on what's actually being used in our cluster. We're going we're gonna to zoom on this one, maybe. Try that. I don't know. I never remember how it works. Yeah. So this one shows me the success rate for my services. And I'm going in a different window to just call the URL that I identified is, is not working. It's HTTP hexagons slash game. I'm going to call it in a loop, and I'm going to see how it's behaving. Because this TO knows about HTTP, it really knows which endpoints are called. And this way, you get a, a nice visibility at the L7 level about what you've deployed in real time. So if we, if we take a look at it, we can see that there's a hexagon ref service that is serving 100% success. And then all the other services, they seem to be broken, like one time out of two. right? We can maybe um, zoom in if you don't see the, the detail. Uh, see? So this one, reference, good. And all the, the others, Problem. We have a problem. So I think this kind of visibility is good already, right? Um, but what if we have better than that? Distributed traces. So there's a lot of tools to offer distributed traces, but most of them you have to modify your code to make it work. With Istio that captures all the traffic between real services, you can do that automatically. I'm going to start zipkin. It's going to show me. I'm going to show uh, all the traces. So for example, this trace, five spans. It means that it went through five services. I can see that it went from the UI to the GAM, and it called the ref service, and another one, another one. I can even see the URLs that were called. Like one is slash count. Um, how do we escape on that? One is. This hexagon, so it must be the 41st hexagon. 
and this one. Okay, so it, it basically shows me two random hexagons on the page, and it should work. And sometimes it doesn't work at all, like this. This is one of the traces from my system where it fails. Red means failure, right? So it started by asking the count, number of hexagons, and then taking a random one. Uh, where is it? Uh, random one. Come on. Like slash zero, and then another random one, slash zero, and then another random one, slash zero. So it tried to always display the same hexagon in my page, so there must be a bug somewhere. I should, I should be done in five calls. I have 40, 24 calls. So I'm going to take a look at the, the code. Do you like that? You don't have to touch your applications, right? It's done automatically because it captures the HTTP traffic. So here's the code. So I will help you. There is a nasty bug inside. So instead of taking a random hexagon, it always, takes the, it always thinks there's only one hexagon. So when it tries to find two different hexagons to display, there is a problem. We're going to fix that. Uh, we're going to fix that. Um, OK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebuild my application. And good to go. Ship it. It's fixed, right? Maybe we can do better than that. Maybe we can use Istio not only to analyze what we've deployed, but also to help us deploy in a more um, controlled manner. One thing that I like is canary deployment. The idea is that I can deploy a fixed version of my service in parallel of the one that is actually in production, and I can redirect my, the traffic for one user based on HTTP headers to this fixed uh, service instead of the one that is known to be broken. It's quite easy to do that with uh, Istio. Because Istio uh, extends the platform, I have to add this kind of YAML file. It's a root rule. It's, it's, it's a routing rule that says, OK, all the traffic going to this microservice, if they match these parameters, they are sent to the version fix and not the V1. And of course, I need to deploy a fixed version. So we're going to edit a little bit of configuration. And we're going to see if our canary build works. Um, so the idea is, OK, my site, my site is broken. So we can also see it with curl. It's, it's broken. Sometimes it works. What if I add a header that says, I'm user David? Seems to be fixed. OK? Because Istio is routing to the new fixed version of the service. I can also do that. I've got a nice plugin here, nice plugin where I can set headers uh, in Chrome directly. So if I use the website, it's fixed for me. For the rest of the world, it's broken. For me, it's fixed. Good enough, right? Ship it. <laughs> OK, it's fixed. What I've seen all the time is when you fix something, you tend to break other things, right? Who's seen that already? <laughs> yeah, that's life, sorry. So it seems to be good for one user, myself, which I'm not a typical user, but can, the, can it handle the load of all my system? What if I connect, I send all my users to this new version of the service? Will it break some, sometimes? So what I can do with Istio is I can configure it to send a copy of all the traffic in parallel in the production version and also in the new version that I'm trying to fix. So basically, when users connect to my application, they're going to talk to the production version, but all the traffic is also sent um, asynchronously to the fixed version. And I can monitor it. I can see, OK, do I increase the number of er errors? Do I, uh, do I uh, raise the number of uh, uh, the, the response times, things like that. Uh, we're going to activate that. There is some YAML files to modify. Who doesn't like YAML here? Yeah, I know. I don't have to look at you, I know. 
I'm just deploy it with uh, uh, traffic uh, mirroring, and I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the the Grafana thing again. Uh, Grafana to see the dashboards. Grafana to see the dashboards. I'm gonna take a look maybe at this one. I'm gonna try this one. Who knows? But this one shows me a success rate uh, by source and by version. So I'm gonna put some traffic on my application. Come on. And we're gonna see if it works. Uh, let's put it bigger, maybe. So what I should see, if it doesn't come up, what I should see is, uh, yeah, here. So it's a little bit small on the screen, but in green, you have the fixed version that is 100% success rate. And in yellow, you have the V1, which is 50% success rate. So obviously, when my users connect to the system and their queries are sent also to the fixed version, it behaves better. 100% success rate. And I can take a look at the other widgets, and I can monitor response times, uh, maybe the size of the response, uh, global error uh, uh, number, everything. But it looks like it's better this way. Do you like that? Yeah? I've heard a lot of people tried to capture the traffic from production and send it to the versions before they ship it in production so that they can maybe uh, reproduce edge cases. Edge cases. Um, OK, so you kind of know the pattern, right? Ship it. It's done. It can handle the load. It's good enough. It's 100% success. Let's move all our users to the new version. Let's do that. Or maybe not. Maybe there's one last step we can do with Istio. We can progressively uh, switch our user, shift our users from the production version to this fixed version. But we can control it like person by person. We can monitor if it's going right, right or not. And basically, we can say 80% of our users go to production, 20% to the new V1, and I'm going to see if it works. So we're going to, oops, <laughs> we're going to edit uh, the same file, my roots. This we're going to remove. We're going to say, oops, we're going to say, well, <laughs> we're going to say 50% goes to production, 50% goes to uh, the fixed version. Come on. So now if I refresh my application, it should be much better. In fact, we can use the, the curl thing. I'm almost done. You don't have to flash. OK, so it's a little bit better. We can say, OK, I'm done. 100% production. Come on. And it should be all OK soonish sometimes. Come on. Believe me, it works. It should work at some point. OK. Yeah, it works. Well, almost. Come on. You're putting too much pressure on the system. OK, we're live. So just to sum up, we've seen how we can add visibility to our system. We've seen how we can use distributed traces without modifying the code, whatever language you use. And we've seen that we can deploy with uh, maximum confidence and Thank you very much. <laughs>